Uh, so it's us? Yeah. We ready? Yeah. You got this? Got it. <clears throat> I don't see it. Where is it? Right here. I still don't see it. I see it on your screen, but on mine it says it's black. Oh. Is it black on everyone's? Lynette sees it. No. No, we see it. Why is mine not showing anything? <laughs> now the chat shows up. Uh, it's just log on, it's... log back in if you have to. Well, or I could just whine about it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, now Let's they're now. there. Yeah. All right, that fixed it. I'm just gonna assume the chat's working. All right. Hey, oh, this is me. And this is you. Unless oh. you, you know, unless you would like me to. Yeah, you just do go. yours just and mine. You. Yeah, this just just keep going. I'll just correct. You. Welcome to our afternoon session. It's on, not afternoon for everyone. Oh, welcome to the 1 p.m. Eastern session That's on better. Earth systems all about air. You do. I good. see Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, give me credit down the bottom. Oh. Uh, presented by Stephen Smith and some other girl. <laughs> You're doing good so far. Okay. This presentation will follow along with the video that was released on the playlist. Are you going to like read all the boxes too? Is that how you if it's not it? in your science notebook, it didn't happen. It's like you're just reading the box. This is terrible. You're in a terrible presentation. We can't do this. Uh, there's the stuff. Uh, do they have the link to this? Yes. Yeah, yeah uh, that Did sounded so like I don't believe you. Yeah, you. you didn't have conviction in that. The link, Bill. Do we have the link in the doc? Y'all have a link to this. Um, no, we do not have a link for this in the doc. Aaron okay. Weather. Yeah. Uh, okay, we just put it in the chat and then I'll move it over. You want to move that over? Awesome, thanks. She's so bossy. I'm trying to control your computer from mine. It doesn't work. Um, all right, just like the others. Oh, no, yes. Is it okay if we share? Two, where? Yes, it is totally fine. Please share anything yeah. that, that, that you think someone would be interested in. We are happy for this to get shared. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, and tell them about, you know, Ray Brooke, Superheroes of Science, and uh, make sure they subscribe also. That that would be awesome. Also, feel free to, to take these and add whatever edits and change them in whatever way is going to best work for you. We just wanted mm -hmm. to provide a structure for something to give you a starting point, but definitely, definitely tailor this to however you Make need. Make a copy it. of it, steal mm -hmm. it, use it any way you need. That's why you put the stuff together. We're not really interested in trying to, like, you know, copyright all that stuff and, you know, not share it with the world and be that type of people. We uh, really want just the stuff for you to be able to actually use. Yeah. That's why we've given you the links to like just darn near everything we can think of. Mm -hmm. But um, all right, so air and weather is what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Last year we did it a little differently, um, but there's some crossover. Why are you? I you, don't know. I'm trying to get rid of it. Okay. Sorry. Get rid of no more. It was okay. all good. Okay. Uh, we start. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we start. We started off with the light and dark. Uh, if you know, I I remember doing this when I was teaching elementary with yeah. the uh, using. We had we actually used had kids bring in their shirts and stuff, and so they. Um, well, now I'm distracted. Oh, we can't sit here. We'll read the comments. Like, tell them. Okay, well, I was trying to read it. It was a lot of words. Um, but uh, what was I talking about? The felt as an elementary teacher. Yes, you were uh, we did with t-shirts had, you know, hey, someone volunteer, bring in a dark, you know, like a black shirt and someone white. And then we would do this with thermometers in them. Now with the infrared stuff, that is so awesome that we use those thermometers. And when we did this one, I'm going to say Bill, Sarah, mm -hmm. and myself, we went out and did this one for our elementary STEM degree thing that we are, we're, we're putting together. We should release hopefully a couple of grade levels next month, yeah. um, but for the elementary STEM degree. And this was one of the videos we did for that. And I was shocked on how fast that felt changed. That infrared I mean, thermometer. It was just skippity dude. It, it, it's, it's only like a $10 thermometer. Uh -huh. I think that, you know, I, I'm, I don't know. We got it online at one of the vendors, but 
you i mean it's just point and click and right there and you've got the and you can see in the in the bright sunshine that that dark felt was reading instantly reading several degrees hotter than what the white felt was reading and, yeah, yeah several is a ton yeah I mean, I can't, I can't several exactly. sounds like a small number. You're, I think you're not emphasizing the how difference. drastic it was. Yes. Okay, I, I'm a little disappointed. There. Like maybe the black felt was reading 36 degrees, and the white felt was reading like 24 degrees Celsius. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, do we all know the Celsius? Do we all know this? How to help oh, our Lord, students she's understand? Do it. Yes, I heard this a couple of years ago, and I repeated it last, or I'll repeat it again. But I said it last year too. But you say um, 30 is hot, 30 is hot, 20 is nice, 20 is nice, 10 is cold. Yeah, Did you forget? I, I forgot it. You yeah, forgot 10 it. is cold. Oh, 10 is cold. Zero is ice. Zero is ice. I love it. I, that's so good because now it puts it in that frame of reference. We don't, I don't live my life generally in a, in a Celsius world. So I'm thinking, okay, well, now I can go buy my 10s though, right? And at 30s, super hot, 20s is about room temperature, 10s, I need a jacket. And then. Oh, oh, yeah. Say again. 30 is hot. Now you repeat, hot. everyone repeat that. 30, 30 is hot. 20 is nice. 20 is nice. 10 is cold. 10 is cold. Zero is ice. Zero is ice. There you go. I, I think it's a super quick rhyme. I taught it to my kids and they love it. And I mean, they're like 15 and 13 and nine. So they don't just love things that mom says. And they, they, thought, they thought that was catchy. So. <laughs> um gonna ask them if that's true yeah i did i'm, I'm gonna you fact ask check them this. yeah okay I just just so you know i love the fact check all right keep going we have a lot okay to cover. here we go where's the next thing ha ah, convection currents yeah i say a lot of us do convection currents we do it in a lot of different ways i know we have these big tub, tall tubs here that we do it in uh we've changed the way we do it uh, over the years mm -hmm. and uh just by experimentation and uh this is a fun one yeah yeah Press, yeah, yeah. This is a fun one that uh, we had seen at uh, NASA uh, conference thing. Oh, Lord. Meters and uh, feet. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, so it, that was, was so easy. You saw in the video, mm -hmm. I mean, I just used a tea kettle, hot water, then ice and the other, and uh, where it, it created a nice little convection current, plenty to talk about. And this is simple enough. We can have our students do this. Oh yeah, in in groups. If you're if you're cool with them working in groups at lab benches, and uh, do, do say obviously be careful of hot water, and uh, well, you can, the, you can even see the table there. I have tongs laying on the table where I use the tongs to mm -hmm. move that beaker over where it needed to be. And this is about as low cost of a demo as you're gonna get. I mean, you you yeah. got your your clear plastic tub. Okay, that might be. You might not just have a, you know enough of those, but that's not going to be a couple dollars, right? Yeah, a couple bucks. And you can use cups. You don't beakers. have to use beakers. Right. We had beakers. Yeah. And so why wouldn't we use them? If you have, you know, decent. I mean, don't use like you know, a, you know, a flimsy cup and crush it. Well, if you do videotape it, because I want to see that. <laughs> so bad. Um, but no, this, you had really great results, and that visual, I think, that's really going to connect with the students. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, plastic. Puck box. forty-eight for wow. a plastic box. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. There that's you go. Perfect. But uh, so yeah, it's 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 easy to do. It's fun. It, it mm -hmm. really gets you the conversation, the visuals there, and helps drive that understanding home. Where is that? I thought I put a link in there. Oh, it's the next slide. Oh, okay. Um, because I edited this again this morning after we all talked. How do you go to the next slide? Yeah. Okay. Here. here we go. Oh, the, okay. The one we got from Patrick. Yeah. Uh, from the NASA, we got this uh, actually from a NASA uh, scientist as a part of his presentation he shared with us and showing the con convection currents in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And so, and that is, of course, of course uh, driven uh, by our, um, convection. Yeah, yeah, by the convection currents, by the conveyor belt, which is, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of us have taught that already, and we've shown animations mm -hmm. similar to this. But this is, in this presentation, the link is to it. And uh, that's- This was a I really like neat um, talk that, it was Patrick Taylor from uh, NASA Langley, and um, that he was giving anyways, just about, I think he looks at clouds and the interactions between clouds. And I think it was sea ice. Is what yeah, he's, he's looking he, at. sea ice extends what he researched. That's, mm -hmm. That is his research. But that was just And so he had, awesome uh, had these in a presentation he shared with us. And so we put them up so we could use them. But it was really, it, this is really cool, which leads into. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to this. Yeah, next slide. Yeah. Uh, okay. I thought we had the oh. other one in there. Maybe we don't. There we go. The polar ice. Oh, there you go. Just go ahead. Just yeah, it. yeah, you can play on that too. And uh, this is in, it's in the, this one's in the 
presentation, right? Yes. The video we did? Yeah. Yeah, this one's in the video. We did a short clip of this in the video that we shared prior to this um, professional development. And then um, for your records, just in case you were interested in, um, I love that it's spanning all of these years and that you can see this bar graph, you know, each year, how it's changing. So we made sure we put the complete animation that they had. I believe it goes to the fall of 2016. So it's, I mean, that's as recent as it gets, um, but it's still spanning a lot of years. And I think just that visual, I mean, that's satellite images that they had taken. Um, and it's, it's, it's neat to see cool. the seasonal yeah. changes of it and the change over time both. And yeah. so it's, I thought that was pretty neat too. I enjoyed that a lot. And this is perennial sea ice area. Yeah. All right, move on to the next one. Yeah, if they want to watch it a few times, they're welcome to. They have the link. Right. Oh, the cloud and the bottle cloud stuff. And, bottle. and so now we're deviating from the video itself. The video is pretty straightforward and short, but we wanted to obviously have a few extra things in here. Mm -hmm. The cloud and the bottle demonstration, we have two links to the side. Um, it, well, there's two links on the side. One, uh, the, the how to do it, that's what this one is. It's an older one that we put together. Um, and it really, uh, it doesn't, does a good job. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we didn't bother redoing it. We just reused the old one back when I had hair and, um, the, uh, <laughs> but so it just explained how to do the, um, cloud in a bottle uh, in it safely and stuff and about safety glasses and whatnot. And, uh, cause the visualization, I would say the 1st time I saw the cloud in a bottle thing in the classroom, I was very underwhelmed. Um, it was a high school or science class, mm -hmm. uh, actually fairly local campus, and he just like dropped a, ma a burning match in and, you know, capped it and went woof, woof, and that was so boring because uh, you couldn't see it. it. I was underwhelmed, very underwhelmed, mm -hmm. and I thought if I'm underwhelmed, I know his students are, and so we tried to figure out a better way of doing it, mm -hmm. and um, this, this way is just an outstanding way of doing it. We use a little isopropyl in there, and it makes a really, really good um, Cloud. Yeah, very impressive. Yeah, the other link in this one, the bottom link, the how to that's what this is where I explain how to make that and why that works. And the top one is a link that uh, actually Sarah is in with 1 of our faculty. So, 1 of the faculty at atmospheric scientist, Dan Shiraz, uh, did the cloud and demo in the lab and he was recording for actually for COVID stuff for his classes. And so we kept that clip of him and uh, scaring Sarah on her screen, <laughs> and me behind the camera laughing. And it was awesome. Was but funny. speaking of Dan, if we can jump to the next. Yes. I explained stopper sizes and everything in this. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, that video, I explained it all. Now I'm too old to remember it all. But uh, this one, go ahead and hit play for me. Right, yep. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's okay. And this is Dan himself. He's an atmospheric scientist. And he is what he's doing. He has set up a rotating tank. Literally, that's as fast as it goes, and which you would think would be very underwhelming, but it's modeling the earth, the entire earth in a slow spin of the earth mm -hmm. and how we get layers, how we get the jet stream, how these different convection currents work in the earth's atmosphere. And what we did, we did multiple cameras. So the one in the upper corner that you see was that is a camera that is actually attached to the platform itself rotating. Yeah, it's top one in it. Top one. Yep, yep. And because uh, I know we had like four cameras going that day. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the, oh yeah, it's that camera there. But that we had on top, so we can see what's happening on top. And then here later I cut in and I start showing one that is attached to it down low. And so oh, it's okay. actually right here, this GoPro. And so with this one, he explains, does a really good job, Mm -hmm. I mean, he's atmospheric scientist, you know. So he explains the um, the why we have the jet stream, what's going on there. The animation is just really, really good. Does a great job. He adds the different dyes. Okay, that was still his hand. Oh, here we go. Where he adds. Oh, that's where he's adding um, like glitter. Glitter, type I thing think. And then this is it. the GoPro view that we can see yeah. now. And so we see kind of all three views there mm -hmm. of what's happening. And then he starts adding the uh, liquids in, but he's he does a really good job explaining this. Mm -hmm. And so if you want your students to be able to look, understand and learn it from scientists himself, I thought that was a good one to do. And he had put together as part of this work on this, the links that we have over here, 
the lecture, live introduction, the rotating tank setup, so it explains the rotating tank mm -hmm. itself, the modeling and jet stream, it's what we have here, and then a Google form for the lab, because he wrote and they gave us a lab to go along with this. Okay. Uh, it might be a little high for middle school, I think, mm -hmm. but I thought the video content worked really, really well, and it could really mm -hmm. fit in. I think a lot of our students would understand this, and it would start making more sense to them when we show them a picture of the jet stream where that jet stream is well they can look here and see oh well okay so this would be you know close to the equator this would be further away and this is where our jet stream would be let's see what's happening there yeah. and we even see it in the layers through here and so we can see that there's difference in these layers mm -hmm. they did a really good job with that uh, all right next i think next, next. is where it, uh, everybody really wants to see all right there we go. Oh, no, it didn't. That's, oh, that's the UCAR site. If you've not used the UCAR site, you're, you're kind of missing out a little bit on a good resource. And so I threw a slide in just showing that uh, resource. And so the UCAR, the How Weather Works, their learning zone, and they have really good stuff. They write, mm -hmm. it, it, theirs is all written off NSF grants. And so they have the money to, to make a really good production. And they do. Uh, paste it into here, please. Um, yes. Um, um, maybe. Yep. Hold on. Get, get I'll, I'll do that. Okay. I, I'll do that. Uh, it's open. That that is a really good resource. So I encourage you to um, look at all the really cool stuff that they have, because I really like that. Yes. Now on the next slide mm -hmm. is that's the reason they were going to here. Oh yes, our so our weather and climate lockbox activity. So this is sort of our um, bonus lockbox for you, but actually we've got several more lockboxes that we'll be sharing um, in by the end. Of, well, by next week we will have these all on. Um, we had shared a link yeah. to the the K twelve lockbox site, and Bill, you might drop that in the and chat that's as a well. Top link we um, have there. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's in the presentation too. Right. And so, and we shared the presentation. Yes. So all these links are in the presentation. You so you get all of this, but this one, uh, yeah, like you said, that site, it, we literally put it together after our sessions yesterday. Yeah. When, when you're like, oh, we'd like to see those. And so it's it's the web page doesn't look that great right now, but hey, I just slammed it together. Give me a break. <laughs> Out of yard to mill. And um, so it's, then we finished this yesterday to change all this yeah. yesterday. Here's the different things for this lockbox. What, um, let's just go to the next page. And yeah, sure. To it. You agree with that? Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, the we have a key to lockbox. It's a part of it that's first thing in the dock. Mm -hmm. Whenever we do these lockbox, we put a, a, like a, a key, I wanna say a key. And so it basically reminds me mm -hmm. what the heck we did. Yeah. And so if I look at box one, well, here's box one. What type of lock? Well, I need a four digit numeric lock for that one, the way it's set up. You can change any of this to do what you want. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, okay, what's the combination is lock? Because, you know, I always forget. So there's my combination. How will they get the combination to it? They find all the words in the word search. That will give them the show them the correct combination, and we'll show that in a minute. Where does it lead them? And this is kind of like your graphic organizer walking you through a lesson plan, right? The box contains envelopes of graphs and statements about the graphs. And so this line walks me through as a refresher, because it might have been a year since I've done it, walks me through a refresher. So, oh, yeah, I need to grab this. I need to grab a four-digit lock. I need to grab this, this, and the other. And um, we'll jump back to that slide yeah. in a minute. Yeah. First thing we give them is this. And uh, I won't change slides until someone tells me an observation about this slide. This is an infographic to have a front and a back. So look at this infographic real fast and uh, tell me one observation you see about it. Yes, Lynette says there are words circled. Ah. You are correct. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yay, <laughs> and Angela, Angela's responding. Now, the students will look at this and they'll be like, mm, you know, and they, they might look through it, but they get this. There's the front. And there's the back, and there are words circled on the back, which 90% of them forget that. Well, not 90%, but some of them forget that or don't realize there's some circle on the back. And the other thing they get is this word search. Now, can I show you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And um, now you notice in the word search, I do not give them any instructions. When we hand this, yeah. I just hand this to them and said, all right. You know, I explained we're going to do a lockbox activity. Mm -hmm. You have to really think about clues and, and look for clues on each thing in order to get through these. Now, here's your first thing. We give them the infographic. You saw the front. You mm -hmm. saw the back. We'll give them the word search, and then I'll walk away. 
and uh well i don't walk too far because no. you know pencils and stuff. right but the um and then it's like they're like what do we do and i'm like read the directions and look for your clues and they they are pretty quickly and you know how it is one group finally figures out oh the correct words is circled and then the the infographic is circled oh we should start and then before you know it all the groups know because they all know one group figures it out they all figure it out and uh, and then they start looking but it's neat because there are a lot of additional vocabulary words hidden in here and um and so some of them will just start circling every word uh and some will eventually well actually i love the groups that circle every vocabulary word and then come up and say okay i'm done what now yeah because like, someone uh, will just start circling yeah all any vocab word they see yeah and so and it's it, this that the reason I use these first is because it spreads out the groups mm -hmm. so they don't hit box one too fast. And so it kind of paces them out. Your 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 students, the, those groups that are a little bit quicker about it, they're jumping in and they're like, shade them in, you know, find the correct words. Oh, these are circled, those are circled, shade them in. Mm -hmm. And they'll start doing it. They'll follow the directions and they'll get through it. They're gonna hit box one first. Mm -hmm. then, you, then you have that middle group some of them read it, some didn't, others are circling all groups and you'll be like, okay, um, read the directions to me real fast. What directions? On the page. <laughs> what directions? Find the correct. Well, what ones are correct? I'm like, hmm, let's look at our clues. <laughs> you know, and then you can walk away at that point. But, but then they, they've circled a bunch, but it doesn't matter. I'm like, don't erase those. Just what's it tell you to do? Shade, oh, shade in. So start shading the others. Mm -hmm. And once they get those, once they shade in the correct words, and there's each one's used once, they can then, what's hilarious is they're so excited about getting it done, they don't see what they've done. A lot yeah. of times they'll run up, I did it, we did it, what's next? I'll take the paper, I'll hold, hold it, it back, back just a little bit, yeah. and they're like, Oh, you know, and then they <laughs> grab it and they run over to the box. Right. Um, other thing, always have two of uh, box one. Yes. Always have two because it can be a funnel still. Why well, use the word search to kind of spread them out? And remember the word search, we want them reviewing vocabulary and thinking about vocab, but it is not, it, it's really used to spread them out more than anything, yeah. but it's not something we want kids to spend an entire period on the word search. And you'll have some that are just, it's, this is a struggle for them. Mm -hmm. And so what I'll do it is as I will start scaffolding different groups at different paces. On some of them, I will walk up and I will point, hmm, time, hmm, boom, I'll slam my fist down on, on right on time. And then they know that's in that little group. Then I'll just give them a smirk and I'll walk away and they're like, oh, oh, it's right there. You know, and so it, it's, it, it's, yeah. you got to scaffold them because you don't want them there. We don't want them spending too much time on this, but we want to pace all the groups out to spread them out a little bit. Yeah. This is a great way for them to see vocab. They visually see a bunch of other words that so have to distinguish between them. Uh, this one has really been vetted because we've done this, oh Lord, probably a hundred times with by now. groups everywhere from fifth grade to teachers that have been teaching for 30 years. I yeah. mean, and everyone in between. I mean, we've done this with. It's, with it's yeah. Tons with of high school groups. And yeah. it's, this is, I, I'm pretty sure there's no cuss words in this. Um, so. <laughs> yes, you do have access to all of these. These are all. Um, Without the circled word. Yeah, just the, the clean. Um, uh, oh, the infographic without the circled ones. I, um, when I made it, I sir, if all right, um, Bill, you're under email. Or wait, you yeah, sent, send okay. me a message. Remind okay. me to look for my originals. Okay, it's been like a couple of years ago since I've made the infographic. Mm -hmm. I, it, it might be on my office computer. Uh, if I can find the original files, I'll try. I'll try, and so they'll send me a message. I'll do it. Uh, I'll, I'll try to do it next week. If I can't, then no. Uh, but if I find it, then yeah. <laughs> But hey, this is fun. We really enjoy this when students do. This leads them, and like I said, I'm gonna jump up, close your eyes, there we go. Uh, like I said, it leads them to a, a box. So we literally mm -hmm. have a box with a four digit lock. They are, yeah, four digit uh, numeric. Mm -hmm. And so they look up 714, opens up. What do they see? There's an envelope setting in there. That's all they see, it's an envelope. Now, What's on the envelope is just this top part that says matching graphs. 
it's pasted to the top of the manila envelope. Mm -hmm. It's a full size manila envelope. And what's really funny, and it, I've had teachers do it to me too, and uh, I really get a giggle out of it when they do, um, especially if they're like really cocky and they think they caught me on something, which is really not that hard to do. Um, but they'll be like, hey, hey, the code's right on it. It says right, it's, you put you the code up. right on. You put the code on it. And uh, I'm like, okay, we'll try that. Yeah. Well, that this is a you know, five digit, Numeric, number code. <laughs> but our lock, as we see, is a five character letter lock. Uh -huh. oh, that didn't so, work. That's the best, though, when the student groups come up and they're like, Well, I already have the code. Great. Go try it. Go get into that box. And then they walk back real sheepishly. And they're like, Oh, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> and so it's, that's, that's kind of an entertaining one. And what they have to do, and in the doc, we have copies of them. It's, this was a UCAR activity. Yes, this time. was yeah. a UCAR. A UCAR activity. And so they have to match a, a, a graph with a statement about the graph, which is like a hugely powerful thing for them to be able to uh, understand a statement, understand just, with just looking at a graph. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something we so want them to well, be able to do. In fact, there are a lot of questions on their standardized exams that they're taking mm -hmm. where they are, um, you know, this is a connection that they're having to make on these is looking at the graph, interpreting the graph and relating that to um, to a description. Um, so they're, they're going to see other examples of this. And I think more than anything, it's really helping them take those steps to building data literacy. So understanding that, you know, I, this is one way to visualize the set of data, but what's it really telling me? And, you know, they might start getting like, okay, you, you know, I have my X axis, I have my Y axis. I mean, hopefully they're starting to put some of these things together. Um, but then when they're actually able to correctly match it to what that description is, I mean, that's, then they're really starting to get on their way to, to being able to do. Big, yeah. 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 But, and so with this one, they have, we, uh, and in the thing, you'll see them, mm -hmm. it's like half page of a graphs and, they're just all jumbled up, but they're lettered and numbered. And so they have to take these letters. What letter lines up with not the number one? Graph what line. letter? Yeah, what a, a statement, what graph lines up with statement number three? Mm -hmm. And they have to put these together to get the code. Now we did um, what you're going to see here, and I don't know if we, I don't know if it's yeah, on our pages it. or not, um, that we did put the, uh, we wide it out where it says like a equals one, where we put, oh, um, yes. we changed because we wanted the letters to spell out S O R A L because of the letter lock that we had. We couldn't do an alphabetical A, B, C, D, E, like we couldn't do that. Um, so we changed, we, we, we arranged them all. We set them in the order that we wanted. Then we used some white out on the bottom and, uh, and we, we changed the letters so they would match up. And then we put numbers on the descriptions. So that way, when they matched them all up, we were able to make to have that cipher ready. Yeah, the um, the lock box. Someone asked about mm -hmm. those making them bigger because uh, it's it doesn't have a link to it. The lock box, the uh, that we the original lock box one mm -hmm. link, the Purdue blah 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 blah, blah lock box that has the um, graphs in it, and the plus yeah. I think they're on the bottom of here too, right? Uh, yes, they're on this yeah. document too. Yes. They're on this document, they're in the document. We cut paste everything in it. It's a UCAR activity. We just mm -hmm. borrowed their stuff. Um, the, oh, and uh, don't make if you use the ones with word that you can make words. Don't make a word. Uh, we made solar. Uh huh. Was the first thing we did, and uh, so the first group that gets it, what do they do? They yell, "It's solar!" You know, and they go running across there to do it. Well, now well, everyone running. knows now it. Now everyone knows it. Yeah. They don't even need to match them up. Yeah. So we had to change a couple of things around. And uh, I think that's why we uh, whited it out, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we whited it out and made our own combination there. But uh, it's, yeah, don't make it a word because then they'll yell it out. And I, I got to the point where now it's they're not allowed to say anything when they come to me because uh, <laughs> oftentimes at this point, I'll just, it, for time, sometimes yeah. I'll just double check. Uh, because I don't want kids just up there trying tons of combinations. I'm like, no, you have oh. to show me your combination because I make them do a notebook where they do it. And so I'm like, okay, you have to show me your combination. If I approve it to be the right combination, then you can uh, try it. And so I will do that just so because otherwise you'll have those couple students. They just want to go up there and try every combination, every lock. We've limited. They're wasting so their time. They can try it once and then they have to go to the back of the line to try it a second time because we have so many groups that'll be waiting. 
And so the, the and uh, yeah, it's this is in that other doc too. Yeah. I thought I saw another thing pop up, but I'm not seeing it. Huh. Okay, no, there it is. Yeah. Um, next, next, uh, that leads them to uh, the next box leads them to a crossword. Mm -hmm. Now they still have their infographic and all the words that for the crossword are in the infographic. Yes. And because that's still at their desks. We do laminate the infographics and reuse them, but the other things mm -hmm. are consumable for students. But, and so they will need to, with this one, they fill out, uh, the, the, the crossword puzzle using mm -hmm. the infographic, and, but the, Ah, the thing is down here, boy, I should have made that when it was higher. Um, down here, complete the crossword and use the colors of the rainbow to cipher uh, and the cipher below to open the next box. So the colors of the rainbow, so they have to put these Roy G. Bib order and then use this cipher to be able to get the numbers for the six digits on the two locks. We have two three digit locks mm -hmm. on this on this last one here or the next one we have two three digit locks and one's lock is labeled one my lock sample two and so they have to um jump back up to that i'm jumping back and forth but yeah so to get their number cipher to get the two one three then the five uh four six mm -hmm. they have to actually go through and um the recall the rainbow and use the cipher to get that yeah. so a lot of them will be confused Yep. If you're printing these, um, we noticed we had printed some out to a color yes. printer and then copied, made copies of them. The color printer worked. Worked right? beautifully. When we went to make copies of the colored printer, the Whoa. copier was not as vibrant. Purple and blue looked exactly the same. Yeah. So that was just, just be aware if you're using color and, and you've probably had issues like this anyways yeah. already. Um, just be aware then that you're getting the right. Make sure if you have a colorblind student, in in yes. a group, make sure right. that well that person is paired with someone who isn't. If you're using this, mm -hmm. or you'll have to look at texture patterns instead of uh, uh, color patterns. Right. But uh, if you have that student, I'm sure you've worked with that. But yeah, so that's a big one though. Mm -hmm. The the copier did a lousy job. Yeah. So we ended up like literally printing off a hundred copies. <laughs> Got awkward at the copy printer. And then the last one. So then they use those two three digit um, locks. They open that up and now they're getting a, um, a climate worksheet and they get these three sheets. Mm -hmm. And what it's kind of cool is showing the latitude and then the um, some different cities throughout the globe. And then there's also um, the graphic under it is an overlay with the um, climate classification for it. And so there this is another one you want to make sure you have a sharp color contrast, if that's what you're using. Mm -hmm. um, and again, be aware of, of students that have trouble um, seeing that color differentiation. But basically what they're doing is they're trying to, to find where the city is and what color that would be. So what would its climate classification be? There are several letters, but I just go with the very first one, A, B, C, D, or E. There's like, it's like a multi-letter combination yeah. and the key and everything is right there. But I just have them list what that climate type would be, A, B, C, D, or E for each of these cities. So they're doing a few things. They're you know, using a map, they're finding a location, they're comparing one map to the next. So there's some comparison happening. Um, they're making a decision on which climate type it is. And then they're also getting a feel for um, you know, where these climates are throughout the globe, that we have similar climates on opposite sides um, in, in these hemispheres. And that when we get the closer that we are to the center, um, the closer we are to those uh, equatorial um, climate. So it's a pretty neat. This was this an activity globe, yeah. from a globe, the globe program. Um, and so, so that's where we were able to get that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is, another, it's a really great program. If you're doing weather and climate and stuff, the yeah. globe.gov is awesome. We use their app uh, all for a lot of different things. Yes. The, the globe the observer cloud, app. The cloud, mm -hmm. globe observer yeah. is the app name. And it's the a cloud cover yeah. is an awesome one. Yes. You can do, um, it's, it's a citizen science. Um, app and it's uses actually the data that's collected gets uploaded to um, a NASA database and the NASA scientists use that data then um, to um, to ground it's part of research yeah. ground truth verify satellite data and to do research yes and so a satellite shows us uh, things from space the top looking down right yeah. and so yeah looking down and then the um, 
that we see things from the ground, from the ground up. Looking so up. ground truth mm -hmm. verification is part of it. Yeah. The biometry that Brooke mentioned, um, that way, so we do that uh, with your class every year, don't we? And um, it's that's a really good one using tree height. That's mm -hmm. like the best STEM activity you can do. Yes. Having them calculate tree height using for a uh, clinometer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Using a homemade clinometer, then having them do it with a phone with the app. And uh, that's just takes the black box out of it. Here's our, yeah. our clinometers. We have videos for making a clinometer and also with um, using, well, calculating tree height. We have both of those on our Superheroes of Science channel. Your eyeball is one degree higher than mine. Mm -hmm. I need to sit up. All right. Next. That is, that's when they get to this oh, yes. key, that's, that's um, checked by the teacher. And then I'll send them back and have them, if they made mistakes or whatever, go back, oh, take another look at yes, these cities. Uh, and then they will get to the prize box after that. That's the end of our activity. And usually it takes about, it depends on the students. Um, it usually takes about 40 minutes, th uh, 30. It really depends on the yeah. students. Um, it's absolute, the, the spread is amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, I, I've, what did that one fourth grade? Oh grade. yeah. It was like 18 minutes. <laughs> um it, it, I asked the teacher, I'm like, I it, I can't do it that fast. What has yeah. happened here? And she's like, Oh, yeah, I can't keep her busy. <laughs> uh, I'm like, dang. Okay. That, that was yeah. absolutely amazing. But yeah, it, I can do it in a 50 minute class period, no problem. Mm -hmm. Most it, sometimes uh, my some of my slower groups they won't quite get done. And so it's it generally me being the mean person I am, if they have homework, it's usually this last one. They would have for homework to film. I right, finish that up, turn it in tomorrow, or whenever the next class you see that class. But uh, that's up to you, obviously, how you do it. But yeah, it's without a block period. I can still get through this. Mm -hmm. You just got to keep them moving, and yeah. to make sure they don't get stuck too long on any on any particular spot. Give them those context clues. Yeah. This is good. Um, all right. And someone asked if the maps are online uh, for this activity. This is all on the globe page. We also put a copy for oh, yeah, this for our right lockbox, so it'll be in our um, in our notes that that we give you. But yeah, it's sourced from the Globe program from Globe.gov. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. If you want to see the original ones, since our just Globe.gov has this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we have. I forgot you put those copies in there. Didn't you? Yeah. And so it's it's in the thing. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the other stuff on this one is the um, last year's last year what we did before the weather and climate we did density straws activity if you've not done that one that's a that's a awesome activity to do we explained that in the video uh, i think we did a good job fat simulations for density mm -hmm. that sarah brought in and showed us last year mm -hmm. uh, was outstanding it's why it's nice to collaborate with high school people they know all those resources that i didn't seem to know um and then it's like the water cycle in a bag we talked about which is kind of a boring one to be honest it's it's boring, it's, it's boring. it has a purpose yeah so okay. it's, it was boring. you know that fifth grade class will kind of liked it but it, i think, I think so. it's boring yeah. um and then the convection currents we talked about then the fresh water on earth and that's uh the like the water water everywhere or something like yeah well it was the okay part of the south that's of the, the tree cups, right? and then yeah. yeah the cups yeah i think it originally is a some some place called water water everywhere okay or maybe that's the dumb bead thing you do the bead thing that's so dumb i hate that activity <laughs> um you do that i'm sorry I'm not judging you just your activity um uh, because i hate it but uh so it's that's but all those are in there and we explain i mean it's as you can see even in the powerpoint we tell you exactly how much we used for this and the gallon jugs and your fat simulations we talked about mm -hmm. Uh, the energy very similar to what we did. See, look at the difference there. Oh, yes. See, I think your numbers were bogus. You gave them you underplayed. And uh, so it, these work really, really well. Presenting. And um, the uh, water, that's the water cycle in the bag. It's yeah. boring. And then uh, the. All our convection currents. Convection and we currents. redid it this year with a white background. So you could see that contrast a little better. I think it worked better, better this year. Better, yeah. Actually. And oh, yeah, yeah this the, is the one all the water to the talk earth. about all yeah. the water. Uh, uh, fat simulation. It, yeah, wasn't there a fat issue with because the whatever the 
flash thing yeah adobe use? flash stop so they've been Doesn't converting it? everything to html5 and they are in the process of, of converting all of those i don't know if they've all been converted yet or not um, but the html5 now is what will support and there were also devices that didn't support adobe flash for whatever reason yeah. so um yeah hopefully that html5 I, i've been seeing i'm on the fet listserv and i get a lot of these emails and it sounds like they've made a lot of progress in updating everything there may still be some that aren't and i i missed what was on the chat uh they just mentioned it doesn't work with chromebooks right now oh oh with chromebooks oh shoot she said uh someone mentioned that there's no earth science fet simulations on there it's almost all physical science Okay. Huh. Well, that's why I love it because it's all physical science. Hmm. Uh -huh. I thought that one we had that we showed was a or something. Wasn't there a faults in plate tectonics? Wasn't that a FET one that we saw? I thought there was. And I know there I was know. one like a moon, like a gravitational one with the moon. Well, I'd have to look back at that again, but yeah, I thought it was. Anyway, I'm not calling you a liar. I'm just telling you I haven't Ooh. seen it. Okay. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, so it's that's that's the the whole shabam. The uh, lock yeah. box that was at the beginning. I exaggerate. <laughs> Where was the lock box link? Um it, Well Bill, you put that in already? Yeah. It you, was before you put the lockbox link in? Yeah, I yeah. can do it again. Yeah, drop that in again, make sure they get the Purdue website one. Yep. Okay, thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, uh, I'm gonna stop sharing. Oh, I thought screen. you already did. Nope. Okay, but um, we start. You can't like take your computer away from it oh, because it's the camera I'm using. Oh, sorry, it's terrible. But uh, see what I had to put up with working. Oh with my gosh! And um, it's terrible. But uh, it's now I can't see the comments. What are you doing? Why can't you see comments? I have to look at mine. Oh. Then I'd have to look over there. This is so oh. difficult. You, you're making things so hard. But that's the, the basically the whole thing. The the website he put in there. Um, so where do you suggest we do this lock box in the unit? This one is in the climate one mm -hmm. in weather. I'd kick it off with it. I'd start with that myself yes. uh, because it's like the infographic has all of our. I, I okay. mean, it, it, if someone else disagrees, then fire away. But to me, it's like an introduction. Oh, it's, I thought, whoa, yeah. there's like 30 or 40 messages. I I'm scrolling, scrolling and he thought there was a lot of people disagreeing. Well, yeah, I say, if you disagree, <laughs> let me know. And all of a sudden, the feed started rolling. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I would be surprised. But the, uh, I, I personally, I do it to kick it off because it's, it, once again, it, it it's kind of a, a preview to me, an introduction to vocabulary and stuff like that. And so obviously it's up to you and your curriculum where you put it, but that to me, that's where I would use it to kick it off with. Mm -hmm. But, uh, oh, what was that? You only need three lock boxes to do this with an entire class. Uh, yes and no, um, I'd say four, uh, because I'd have two copies of number one. Um, I'd have two number ones because it, it, that's where your fun will be. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a line. At fun one, I usually have people do it uh, groups of three to run through it. Um, so you do have groups still. But I have two number ones, then one of the other boxes is always just fine. Now, I will say we oftentimes we run out of start running a little low on time towards the end. Yes. And so. I, I don't, I, I tell, hey, let's, let's, let's not lock the locks at the very end. Mm -hmm. You know, it, we'll, we'll just set those on it and double check that way if they have it. You know, okay, yep, you got it right. And then just pull stuff out just to save a little bit of time. But I'll do, we'll start taking that as a shortcut. Um, speaking of locks, this year, if you're using actual locks, that's also something to keep in mind that um, it's very easy for the locks to accidentally get reset. Uh, and I, it's kind of hard to, to understand that unless you've actually like, been using the locks and you kind of see, because it didn't make sense to me at first. I thought, well, how? Like, we set the lock, we put it back, it's not a big deal until it happened like a few times in a row in the same session. We kept having the lock reset and, and luckily we were able to get it undone. Oh, you're talking about the one that was a teacher workshop? They, yeah. They were, they were the ones that reset them all? Yeah, yeah. not on purpose. I remember that day. It was just, they were so competitive about trying to get there. They were literally pushing and yeah. fighting each other to get it and they would 
the, they, when they push the lock, the lock in, in to try to get it, they would accidentally twist one of the numbers. And that's and it how reset that one reset. It. And then we could now, luckily, yeah. just randomly, one of the participating teachers' retired husband was a um, like he broke locks, like he was a, he was lock, a, a locksmith, yeah, locksmith. And he was like camped out at the across McDonald's, the street across at the McDonald's. Street. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we grabbed these three tubs with locks on them, walk across the street to McDonald's, like, and just hey, set on the table for so... him. <laughs> he brings them back later. It was awesome, <laughs> but um. Yeah, so be, you do be careful with that. And one of the things we saw, and like uh, like I'd said uh, said before, we will do a video just on uh, how to do lock boxes. We're, we're going to do that next week, so we would, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And but one of the hints is that, that we've seen at workshops that other teachers have done. They make a photocopy or a, a, what do you call it? A, the shadow copy, whatever you know, you draw it, uh -huh. know. but of an actual lock open in mm -hmm. beside the box, they have place lock here. And so then the students open it and they place it down right there. So students know not to close it and shut it again. And uh, that it, I could see as being a really good management thing. We've just had good luck other than the teacher workshop. Right. Well, we, we had, have one when... other time with students. Uh, I know once or twice with students, they've locked them. But they were on the boxes when it happened, right? And so, so we, able to we didn't lose those. any time. We I think we started actually having them hand us <laughs> hand us the lock, and then we'll put it back on once we're double. You know, we've double checked that it's the lock is the combination is still the right way. Yeah. Is there uh, all right? So time. Uh, let me hit the first hamburger. <laughs> I like it. Um, and is it winning? But uh, the time frame. Uh, it's like I said. I can do this in regular forty five fifty or forty eight minute uh, clash. I don't have a problem doing that, and most most of the time, my, most of my students get through it. I have one or two groups that don't quite finish, and uh, I, I just, like I said, I, I give them homework for it. Mm -hmm. Is there a Google form? We did not do the Google form for this because we designed this one a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and is everything was always in person, so there is not a Google form for that yet. If that's something you're like, I'd really really like that and be able to use that, would you please make one? Then uh, we can talk Sarah into doing that. Yep. Just let me know if it's if you if that's what you really need. Because <laughs> she's Google certified. I I am Google level one certified, but I'm guessing there's probably people that are way higher than me. I'm on not this, certified, on this chat. so I can't do it. Well, <laughs> you should. Yeah, you are you are certified, but something different. <laughs> <laughs> certified, awesome. <laughs> but. All right, what other questions we got? Any questions? I want to jump the other one here. Really. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I was reading back through. I, I, we tried to cover. We I, I hope we addressed all the questions that you asked. I if think not, you guys we, did. Say, we weren't did we ignoring you. If not, just either put it back in or. You have you have our, our contact. Yes. All right. And uh, copy the questions. We can look at them later. Yeah. All right. So next, I think uh, the next and final session for this, yeah. Sarah's going to bore us with more chemistry. More chemistry. I mean, uh, Sarah is going to do our chemistry session. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, it, it is the same one that we have. Um, Thank you so much. Thanks for the feedback. Yes. Yes. The session next will be the same as yesterday. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was teasing her about being boring. It's just the same one as yesterday. Oh, thank you. Thanks for the feedback. We sure appreciate it. Yes. I just want to say that um, thank you so much. This is one of the best PD that I have ever done. Uh, so this is the really good value, good resources, and something that is um, that we teachers actually, you know, look forward to. That give us something tangible that we can bring to the classrooms and actually do it. Um, so I really, really enjoyed. I don't know how, Bill, you got my email and I got into this, but I would say I think that was something by miracle. I was just late for getting my supplies, but that's okay. Um, if you do this next year, please let me know. And also anything I can do, if you have a face group or anything that can help you promote this for next year or ever, uh, sign me up for that. I'll do my best. Um, 
to thank you know release this information so thank you for doing this yeah thank, thank you. you so much did you just do the heart thing no i said i was clapping my hands i didn't know i didn't do i was clapping my hands oh my gosh i'm so embarrassed <laughs> Thank you so much. We yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. We really do appreciate. We appreciate feedback immensely. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this meeting out so we can start the next one. Uh, All right, All right we'll jump over to it. All right. Thanks, Rachel.